the, the psychedelic phenomena is like a microcosm of the history of religion, in that religion is both a, a repository of these techniques for transcendental experiences and healing, but it's also, and perhaps more so, um, an institution of mind control and subjugation of populations and a preservation of economic structures that do not serve the vast majority of people, but serve only a small elite. And that, um, and it's sort of with through this lens now that I've reconsidered what this modern phenomena of psychedelic drugs is really all about. Now, I was listening, I was listening earlier today to your tech, your TEDx talk about uh, climate change. You know, and, and your the, the the your realization that you're sharing that we're really at the very you know edge of time here, and that this is not a secret. People have known this for quite a while, and um, and the the fact is one of the motivations for the modern psychedelic movement that that a number of people got together and realized that we were going to have to really. Uh, start to control the world's resources, control the world's population. Democracy was no longer going to be tenable. We needed to kind of trick the population so that we could control them in, in much the same way. In fact, Aldous Huxley was one of the leading actors in this scenario uh, to create a kind of brave new world kind of story where um, people are deluded they're anesthetized by the institutional requirement of taking soma, a drug that would um, make them feel like everything was okay, give them a mystical experience and let them bliss out for the weekend and completely ignore their economic conditions, their political responsibility. And in this way, the elite hierarchy is able to continue their uh, agenda to dominate the world for their own ilk. Now, this is not my theory. I'm, 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 um, I'm basically just telling you what Aldous Huxley said himself, and and he's basically articulating his motivation for for popularizing psychedelic drugs beginning in the 1950s. And your listeners can read this themselves. I mean, we all know Huxley's book, Brave New World. Not so many people are aware of, of Huxley's appendix, his addendum to Brave New World, Brave New World Revisited. You can Google it. It'll just take you a half an hour to read it. And it's chilling. You know, after you read, listen to your TEDx talk about the, the you know, kind of end of the world scenario, Huxley's kind of hitting all those notes. And, um, and so it's like these, the group of elites that are throwing fairy dust in the eyes of the population so that they're distracted from from this uh, political operation. Mm. Now, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so are you saying that Aldous Huxley was advocating for something that he was almost warning us about through a brave new world? Does that make sense? Like, well, yeah, it's a tricky thing. I mean, we all, I mean, if you're, like me, I mean, most of me and my friends, and we, when we read Huxley, we read Brave New World, and we, we think of the warning. You know, we think of Huxley as a great progressive, you know, intellectual, a humanist. But, um, you know, I'm kind of taking a step back now and looking at it like Huxley wasn't really, he was kind of a warning, but it was also kind of a blueprint. And all this Huxley wasn't, wasn't really exactly like a, progressive kind of humanist he was really i mean i don't know this for sure and it's something that i research almost daily you know he comes from a family of eugenicists and you can read some of his language and he's got this kind of arist aristocratic air about him and uh you know he's a beneficiary uh he's not really interested in transforming society he's really more describing the way it is and and he and his ilk are the beneficiaries of it. He wasn't, Huxley wasn't a revolutionary. He wasn't like Timothy Leary, who really wanted to, in fact, they were, they, although they were, you know, they're together and both Tim spoke highly of Aldous and enjoyed his relationship. They were, they really had a very antagonistic relationship and, and, um, you know, 
So Tim was really about, Leary was really about um, transforming the society that Huxley was describing. Huxley was a very conservative character, really. Interesting. I think that we have this this idea, and I have this idea, that if you're writing about your psychedelic experience that, you know, like I know Huxley wrote Doors of Perception, where he's describing his, his uh, experience with mescaline, and reading that, and knowing that Huxley almost advocated that at least the intel, intel, intel excuse me, uh, the elite, the intellectual elite, at least could have access to psychedelics uh, for exper- experimentation. Um, that that makes him automatically a radical, or that makes him automatically somebody in the same uh, vein as, say, a Timothy Leary or a Terence McKenna or something. But there are ways in which the psychedelic uh, experience for certain people, like Huxley, um, it really has nothing to do with transforming society. Or maybe it is about transforming society, but more in a way to buckle down on some of the uh, structures that already exist today. Yeah, well, this is one of the things that I encourage students to really look at more carefully because as you just said there's this kind of naive um so psychedelics got branded in the 1960s as being agents of change being counterculture agents of change it's a branding it's an advertising branding phenomena oh psychedelics helped ignite the 60s they were they helped start the environmental movement they were influential in ending the vietnam war there, but you know, that's I, I encourage people to go back and look at this because it's really not true. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> really, the opposite is true. The psychedelics were released into contemporary society by the right wing, by the elitists, by the by the uber capitalists. You know, and this is some so some very important books. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna share with you as if your if your listeners want to you know follow up on this. Like one really mm-hmm. important book is um, is called Acid Hype: The Psychedelic Experience and the American News Media, which makes this case very well. Scholarly book by written by Stephen Siff, who's a professor of journalism or communication studies, I believe, at University of Wisconsin. Uh, showing how these drugs were popularized by the media. And the media, you know, you have to understand in American society, post-war American society, the media is not, the mainstream media is not exactly a free press. It's not like this American ideal of the fourth estate, but, you know, beginning in the post-war period, the American news media was basically taken over in a wide-ranging operation, one of the first operations of the CIA called Operation Mockingbird, where the media is basically infiltrated and it becomes not a fourth estate, but a propaganda ministry. And it's selling a mentality of this Cold War. There's a whole agenda in these concepts of like American exceptionalism. And one of the main characters in this drama is a fellow named Henry Luce, who was no, he was he was a fascist. Henry Luce was an uber fascist. He was a he was he supported Mussolini, he supported Hitler, he was all about the concentration of wealth. I believe he was a skull and bones guy out of out of Yale. And um, he was one of the most significant um, and influential popularizers of psychedelic drugs. Uh, you know, and he and Wasson teamed up and uh, and as I said, you know, make it clear in that podcast you just listened to that I'm speaking more and more about. We think of Gordon Wasson as a banker. Well, you know, he wasn't exactly a banker, and then he's dealing with pension funds or money. And J.P. Morgan wasn't just a bank. I mean, J.P. Morgan was a political force in the United States and an anti-democratic political force. J.P. Morgan was a supporter of the Third Reich. J.P. Morgan tried to um, remove FDR in a military coup in 1934. Um, And Wasson wasn't dealing with the finances exactly. He was a propagandist. He was into public relations for a political force. And this was his, this was one of his greatest contributions was introducing this mushroom. 
into society, which would which would create this experience that would be like a Soma experience, like Huxley, another associate of his. They collaborated. And, um, and so that's important to realize. Mm-hmm.